Hi everybody, this is Mr. Folly. Whoops, and I'm right in white. Let's go blue. And welcome to our last big idea. How great is that? So big idea nine, the thermal part. So the first thing we're going to talk about is entropy. All right. So entropy is abbreviated S. Uh, it's it's weird. I say the S stands for chaos. Okay. I also say the S stands for stupid unit. Uh oh. Some people aren't allowed to say stupid. The reason why I make a point about this is that the unit are unit is joules instead of kilojoules. So whenever you have S and other variables, you're going to have to change your units to be to be kilojoules. Okay. Um, so these entropy things, 90% of the questions are, what has more entropy? Okay. So entropy is the energy loss to disorder in the system. Okay. Disorder means chaos. Okay. So most of the time the question will say, what has more entropy? And you'll say more gases increase chaos, thus increases the entropy. Okay. So on this part, I put S and I should call this solid has the least entropy, right? It's the least amount of disorder, least amount of chaos, then liquids, then gases. So if I gave fictional values to this, a solid would be one, a liquid would be 1.3, and a gas is 957. So it's so much more that one gas dominates everything. Aqueous solutions usually have more disorder um, than liquids. And that's a usually unless it told you it isn't, okay? So here's a water molecule, and here's an ionic compound, right? So I've got my ionic compound here, and that's pretty organized. That is not much chaos. Little disorder, right? But when I set this up right here, do you see how this looks a little more messy than this guy, right? And a little more messy than this guy, but you can also see how See how this is a neat repeating pattern where the water molecules are arranged in it? So mostly dissolving is more disordered, but maybe you could see how water might be more organized and have a slightly bigger delta S. Okay? So the other things we need to know. So again, we're looking for disorder. More particle, more particles means more entropy, more disorder, more messiness. More dispersed means more entropy. That's more Disordered. The word dispersed means spread out. Okay. So if I see um, a puddle of water and I kick it and I spread it out, I've increased the entropy. The volume of gas is increasing, means more shuffleability and thus more chaos and more entropy. Increasing temperature increases entropy. Okay. Because the particles are moving around more and they shuffle around more. Okay. These are and the states of matter are the Mac Daddy part of disorder. This is like 90% of what it is, along with the states. Whoops, I didn't do a very good job of boxing. And states. Okay. Gibbs free energy. Gibbs free energy is delta G. And spontaneity. Spontaneity is often called thermodynamic favorability. So this is 9.3. This is also 9.4. So believe it or not, we've already done, we're on our fourth you do. Uh, G naught is the with a degree science, the smell of degree science. I see my degrees. Whoops, I didn't degree it. That's okay. Means they're all in the standard state. A standard state means you have to assume one atmosphere. The temperature is 298 Kelvin. By the way, that's zero degrees Celsius. And the molarity is one molar C. Um, Delta G tells you spontaneity, okay? So they don't use the word spontaneous anymore. Older stuff will. So we want to start saying thermodynamically favored, okay? That means the reaction will happen. This does not mean it's going to happen quickly, okay? So many times you'll hear that something is thermodynamically favored, but it will have to overcome EA, called kinetic control, so it may not start. Remember, 90% of you missed this question over and over and over again. Because I tell you, oh, it's supposed to happen. You know, the K is very big, but it doesn't happen. Why not? It's got a big EA. Okay. This does not mean it is at equilibrium if it doesn't start. 
If the reaction is known to occur thermodynamically favorable and doesn't occur at a measurable rate, it is due to a high EA. Okay, so basically if I have a little wedge right here and I have a ball, that ball can roll down the hill, right? But the wedge is in there. Will the ball spontaneously roll down the hill? Yes, of course, if I remove the wedge. Will the ball spontaneously roll up the hill? No, not spontaneously. Can I make a ball roll up a hill? Yes, if I put energy into it, right? So if a reaction is spontaneous, delta G is negative or spontaneous, which means thermodynamically favored. reactions. If delta G is positive, the reverse reaction will occur. So notice how if my reaction was rolling up a hill, that delta G is positive, which means the reverse reaction rolling down the hill is negative. All right. So if delta G is zero, the reaction is at equilibrium. Both reactions occur at the same rate. Okay. The equation for delta G, there's a couple of them. Delta G is products minus reactants. We've seen that before. That's Hess's law. And there's another reaction for delta G. There's actually a couple of them, but a couple more with this where we start with. Delta G is delta H minus T delta S. So this is the one where we have unit snags. Okay. So delta S has is in joules. And this is and these two are typically given in kilojoules. Doesn't matter what unit you convert into, but you have to make sure that they're together. All right, so let's take a look at this. So if I, I like to think if I want my reaction to be spontaneous. If I want delta G to be negative. Okay, so I want this to be negative. What would I want delta H to be? Well, then. Delta H would be negative. So right here, I hate this greater than zero and less than zero kind of thing. So I'm going to throw in here a negative. I'm going to throw in here a positive. Okay. So I'd want delta G to be negative if I want it to be negative. What about delta S? I'm going to subtract it. So if I subtract a positive, that's going to help contribute to its negativity. So that means it's going to be always spontaneous. Okay. An example of that would be um, mm, a ball rolling down a hill. Okay, eh, I don't want to do that. Um, the opposite of that is if delta H is positive, which algebraically says that's not negative, right? That's not negative. And delta S is negative minus a negative. So if I have delta G equals a positive minus a negative, see how that becomes positive? That means never. All temperatures, this is never. And then for this, I, I wish they didn't do the greater than zero and less than zero thing. It's just math, right? I remember positive, positive is high temperature. Negative, negative is low temperature. And that's pretty easy to remember. And if you're stuck, just plug them in. So if delta G is positive minus a positive, is that going to be positive or negative? Well, I don't know, right? And remember how this is temperature times delta S? Right? So I'm doing delta G equals delta H. See how this is my delta H minus T delta S. So what I was doing was I was using these for my delta H's. And then these would be my T delta S's. Right? Uh, temperatures in Kelvin, so it'll always be positive. But not negative. And when you look at it, you can figure out what the math looks like. This analysis can help us predict thermodynamic favorability, spontaneity, by stating the endo-exothermic and predicting delta S based on states. Um, often, a delta S is really close to zero. Okay, so when we're trying to do what's the state of matter, if I have two um, A gas yields B solid plus C gas, this side has more gases. So delta H of elements are standard. Oh, yeah. So that means you've got to use the coefficients when you do this. Delta HF 
naught of elements in their standard state is zero. Delta G F naught of elements in their standard state is zero. S is zero for a perfect crystal at zero Kelvin. What that means is S is not zero ever. Okay. The decomposition of hydrogen peroxide occurs slowly at room temperature according to the following reaction. Create the sign for delta G. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do delta S. Delta S. Oh, I just wrote H instead of S. Delta S. So this side has zero gases turn into one gas. What do you mean? And then no gases on the left. Okay. So delta S is positive. Okay. So now for this one, I got to figure out delta H. Delta H. Okay. So for delta H, this is a decomposition reaction. So decomp. Right. Oh, let's see here. Decomposition occurs slowly at room temperature. So if it's going to be decomposition reaction, that means it's probably going to break bonds. All right. Break is going to absorb. And then well, let's take a look at it. Let's draw it out a little bit. Oh, there's not a plus. So I got that, and it turns into H2O. And O2. Man, I gotta I don't just break bonds, I just gotta form them. So on this one, it's like, hmm, predict the sign for delta G and de justify your answer. Okay. So it tells us it occurs slowly, right? So on this one, it tells us that it occurs slowly. Well, if it occurs slowly, that means it's thermodynamically favored. Thermod favored. If it's thermod favored. Delta G is negative. Justify your answer. And your justification would be, it occurs. Huh? All right. For solutions, this was, believe it or not, the only thing that was in 7.12 that we skipped over. For solutions, the intermolecular forces between solvent particles must be overcome. Barf. That's why it's positive. And why is delta S positive? I just spread it out. Spread out. Intermolecular force B solute must be, oh, be overcome. Barf. Positive. Again, spread out. Intermolecular force between solvent and solute, solute must form. Barf. But in this one, we're forming, right? That's why it's negative. And we're going to cluster. So clump. Okay, that's it. Which solution have a greater entropy with all other factors remaining equal? Justify your answer. Okay, so what we have here is, remember, KSP tells us a big K equals lots of product. Small k, smaller k, equals less product. So what we have right here is COOH2 has a, a much bigger k, right? So which solution have a greater entropy? Remember, so increasing entropy favors thermodynamic favorability. Thermod uh, favorable. Okay, so that means that COOH taken twice is likely um, has a larger entropy. That's not so bad. Mm -mm -mm. It won't let me scroll anymore. What does that mean? I think that means that we should be done. I'll take it. So I will say toodles to you, and I will see you in class.